So uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here in the virtual bronze uh, showcase 2021. Um, the the I mean the the title is is obvious, right? I, I teach chemistry and I have accent, <laughs> and then um, but we wanted to combine these two possibilities to form a you know a, a new strategy to teach a particularly a STEM a subjects, especially a chemistry in this case, right? So um, I've been working with Jairo Orjuela. He is you know very very instrumental in, in, in developing. Um, all these games that we've been working with. And the reason why uh, we decided to go this route was because uh, with the pandemic, um, you know, there were a lot of, or it's been actually a lot of uh, um, issues in different uh, part of our uh, social structure, right? So we talk about, you know, a lot of issues with the social, economic, political aspect of our, uh, of our society and all because of the, of the effects uh, of this uh, virus, right? So it has created really a lot of pressure in different uh, uh, levels, right? And um, sometimes the reopening to the, what we call normal, it's not really, you know, working in most of the cases. Sometimes, you know, we gotta go back and uh, close everything. Uh, even for us that actually suffer the, you know, the, the virus itself, right? This is the me back in March when the worst part of the pandemic it happens in New York. Uh, but we're still like, you know, trying to do our teaching, right? And um, all of a sudden we were like teaching with the traditional method, right? And then we were pushing to the online, um, like a hundred percent overnight, right? That obviously uh, created like a big gap uh, and I would call like a generational big gap, right? Between the people who use computers and the people who do not uh, uh, use it, right? Um, so we also saw, you know, the difference between the pre-digital era uh, learner or student and the, uh, you know, after uh, the, the um, computers era, the digital era uh, students, right? So we saw these differences. Um, to also saw the way how the before, right? The people used to have fun. Uh, this is the regular type of games, uh, the, the games that we used to play before, or activities, physical activities. And this is most of the time, and probably because of the everybody's in close at home, uh, this thing has become even much more prevalent, right? Instead of the regular activities, um, and so that that uh, that have created. Um, the opportunity for us to think about, okay, games, gaming in, in, in general, right? Games in general are, are like very engaging. So it is a way how the, the, the most of us, right? Not only the, uh, the human beings, but most of the species actually, uh, we learn, you know, like the, the social standing, certain skills, social skills, right? Um, gaming allow us to increase our physical strength, you know, help us with our uh, motor coordination, like I said, create social bonding, managing stress, developing uh, cognitive and creative skills. So in general, you know, we were thinking about this, like we already have all these uh, attributes coming from the game um, the activity, right? And, and in fact, the infants and everything, you know, most of them, all of them, you know, uh, learn most of the skills Right, social skills and cognitive skills, uh, you know, they, uh, thanks to the to the um, gaming practice. And a lot of people actually had done uh, research, right? So we went, uh, we, uh, we were um, uh, reviewing the concept, uh, for example, that the Pythagoreans uh, students are back at 2,500 years ago. They used uh, games as a, as a as an approach to learn mathematics. Right. So later on in 1632, uh, Spinoza actually talks about that in the in, in this statement: mind and body are connected reciprocally and uh, not casually. Right. So it means like like somehow the physical activity it, it teaches us certain skills. Right. That not necessarily come from some other uh, uh, ways. And from from all these uh, uh, thinkers, I would like to talk about this: like playing integrates our virtual world. The real world and projective identity. This is a very important uh, aspect that we take, uh, you know, explore in, in our approach. 
And the reason why is because our approach, uh, you know, the student has to create their own uh, avatar. So that avatar does this, you know, uh, in order for a good learning to occur. So we must extend ourselves into the world. That's what, we, that's what we are trying to do when we talk about experiential learning. And that's when we talk about active learning. It's nothing else that trying to make sure that the student will be present in that experience that we call the learning experience, right? And so, 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 so we're trying to, to understand how we can uh, utilize these uh, um, tools you know, to create uh, the games that we've been uh, talking about in a second. Uh, playing is also, but uh, it's an activity and an attitude, right? Playing is an act of freedom, right? Playing uh, also uh, allow us to understand the world and, and understand ourselves. So it seems, uh, you know, after reading many uh, articles and, and, and words, uh, work about uh, this topic, you know, games are uh, definitely something that, that it might be um, help us to, to create a new approach uh, uh, in, in, to, to learn, right, or to teach in particular. So we said, uh, what about what about if we combine, you know, what the, the learning uh, uh, strategy to gaming uh, based on games uh, can can afford or can can give to the STEM subjects, and in particular STEM because you know I don't know if you guys uh, have heard about the term like chemophobia, right? Chemophobia is it's just basically like. For some reason, I mean, the first question that I ask to my students is semester after semester is, how many of you think that you are not good in math? You know, very sadly, like 50, 60% of the hands that they, they, they go up. And, and it's like, you know, if you, if you are convinced yourself that you are not in some particular area, so no matter how good I am as a teacher or, or as an instructor, right? No matter how brilliant I am, if you already, um, you know, convince yourself that you are not gonna be able to handle this topic, I mean, it's very little what I, I'm going to be able to do for that student in particular, right? And so, and so part of this effort is just to change that approach. You know, somehow mathematics, uh, physics, chemistry, they have like a bad kind of image, right? Like, like in general consensus, a lot of people think is they are very difficult topics. They, and, and part of, I mean, I guess they have the reasons, right? Most of the concepts that we discuss. So they are really like a, like theoretical concept, right? With a very little relationship in our uh, reality. But I don't think it's not that we don't have examples. It's like like even whoever is teaching these subjects, they don't even understand sometimes what is the relationship between the, the phenomenon, you know, around the, uh, in our reality and this concept that we are talking about. Um, I, I, I remember in particular a very sad story. I was talking to one of our colleagues, he's in Australia. So he is a principal in a, in a school. He says, you know, the kids, they enter in an in a elementary school. He says that the kids, they enter to the, to, the, to the school, you know, with a lot of expectations, with a free mind. Uh, we are talking about, you know, elementary school grade one. And he said, but, but grade three, they're already thinking how difficult mathematics is and how complicated it is. So is it like we are doing the right thing? Are we teaching the, these kids this concept in the right way? Or is like, and, and the first problem is this, you know, and mathematics is a tri-dimensional issue, right? It, it, it's, it, 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 the imagination works in, 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 in 3D. So when we take the students and put it in a classroom, we are giving them a 2D, uh, space, right? Which is the, the board, you know, the white board, the black board that we use, that is a 2D uh, space, right? So we are forcing a 3D creatures to fit in a 2D type of world. No wonder why, you know, uh, after some couple of years, they don't, they can understand that transition and we are not being successful in, in transitioning these, these, uh, these conflicts, right? These, these cognitive conflicts into into the reality. So part of, of, of this foundation is what we are taking into account to develop our our strategy, right? So the other thing is this, um, you know, uh, the other day I was talking to Dr. In, uh, uh, Neil uh, Phillip, you know, he is our uh, chairperson of the chemistry department at Bronx Community College. 
And so we were, we were talking about this, like, you know, it's been a more than a year and, and we have students that have been matriculated, you know, in our college and they never ever been in a school, not even one day, the physical school I'm talking about, right? And that's true, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I guess everybody's gonna go back or most of us are gonna go back to, to campus on September, uh, I mean, in, in, in this coming up fall, uh, that's what we are hoping. But I mean, like, like we, we, are, we are also very attentive to what we call the emotional learning. So how we can develop a connection uh, with the with the physical plan, you know, with our campus, which is a very important aspect too. And so this is the Bronx Community College. And so if you guys uh, have been there before, so some of you have been there before, this is, we, we try to recreate the Bronx Community College right there, right? This is a video game, uh, right? Uh, and so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to, um, I'm going to, to share with you, this is a 10 minutes, uh, video right i want just to 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 talk about uh, what we do here right so essentially this is me this is my avatar this is my extension into the world this is the bronze community college right and so uh, we want the students can actually join right they 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 go to this platform that we use that is called roblox they join right and they they start like walking with me next to me right so we, right now we're walking towards the library, right? So we give them some activities so they enter. So I'm teaching Chem 02, which is one of the basic levels of chemistry, right? Uh, so they start like getting, you know, familiar with the, with the, with the uh, 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 campus, right? With the library in particular, and then taking a look into a certain concept of chemistry, right? The element, for example, right? The elements are right there, right? hydrogen, carbon, and then some of the applications, right? So later on, so they have the opportunity also to do some project by themselves. Excuse me, I don't can see now. Okay. Again. So, so everybody can see? Okay. I can see. Now I'm going to start this. I can see. We're going to start this presentation. You guys can see or, or just that I'm not sharing the, the, the video? No, your screen is not sharing at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me start the screen one second. Sorry, that's what happened here. Yeah. One second. I'm going to go back to my presentation. And I'm going to share. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, what about now? Is that better now? Yeah, you can see it now. Yeah, so I, I was saying, right? This is the this is the the physical plan. So now uh, this is the library, which is a very important uh, building for us. Uh, down there, you know, the back is the, the, the building, the chemistry building, right? It, it looks exactly like that, which is just trying to recreate exactly the same. So the student has the, at least virtually, the opportunity to, to walk inside of the, of the chemistry building. We have some some doors like this, right? So trying to get in, it's a little bit tough. At, at some point, we're going to be able to get in. So uh, we put some uh, uh, stairs, so obviously it's not like that <laughs> in the real world. It's a combination between the real world and the virtual world, right? So uh, the chemistry department uh, uh, works in the eighth floor. Uh, computer is. So uh, we have offices and, and labs in the eighth floor and the seventh floor, right? So we're trying to, uh, to do exactly the same, right? So we enter in the classroom, in this classroom, then the students are gonna be able to join. They, they just come and they sit in the classroom just like that, right? So we have right there some uh, concepts on the, the great table, uh, you know, the atom and the nucleus. So they actually can, uh, let me go back a little bit faster. So they can, um, uh, inside of the, of, the, of the classroom also, they have the possibility uh, they have the possibility to take the elements, right? 
in this particular case, uh, we're taking a sample of iron and we're taking a sample of calcium, right? Um, we have some other um, um, games back out in, in the back side where we talk about when we introduce the elements and then uh, the molecules, right? How they can uh, name these molecules, where these uh, elements are located in the periodic table uh, and whatnot, right? That's part of what we uh, introduce the event with. Uh, this is a, a virtual world, so we can actually jump, right? Uh, from, um, uh, we don't do this in the reality. <laughs> so we usually take uh, the, the stairs or we take the, the um, elevator. Uh, the same uh, resource uh, is equipped with a, a tool and this will allow us to, so we took the swimming pool inside of the building and I put it outside and explain a little bit of it, it goes, uh, counted as well. Uh, so this tool allow us to um, to create, a, this is an experiment what we do with densities, right? So here this avatar, uh, in this particular case is me, I'm just uh, teaching them density on, in that particular uh, step, right? So we, we, we have this tool that is um, allow us to build, uh, you know, materials and surfaces. So we can actually utilize that to, to in this case, what I do is I um, we create some uh, spheres with different materials, right? Some of them they will be floating, uh, some of them they are going to sink, right? Depending on the on the density of the material, that's part of what we do. The students actually can manipulate this, right? So they are gonna have like a more um, a close uh, experience if you if you wanna call it that way. Um, and so they can actually uh, do experimentation. So right now we are putting an inclined plan, plan, uh, plane, right? So people who are teaching, for example, physics, they, are, they cannot actually like this, this type of, of tools as well, right? So in this case, uh, we create that uh, sphere and that sphere is gonna have a particular material, right? They are gonna be able to roll it uh, uh, down that, that hill. And, and, and see what happens, right? Depends on the material, it's gonna be sinking or it's going to float. It depends on what material they pick up, right? And they have all these possibilities. So you can see here in, in, in the left part of the, of this, of the uh, screen, you know, all the different tools that they can utilize uh, to build their own experiences actually in the game. At the end, when everybody exits, right? Uh, the, the game is gonna go back to the normal setting, right? The default setting that we've been uh, working uh, with, right? So we also try to, to uh, I'm, going, I'm gonna uh, forward a little bit. Uh, uh, right, here. Uh, right here is when the students actually, uh, uh, right here. One second. Uh, we're also trying to go around the, the campus uh, and around the neighborhood a little bit, right? So, uh, so they can uh, they can see uh, some of the. Uh, right here, uh, but I'm just trying to make it a little bit faster. Yeah, they can roam around the the, the neighborhood, right? So we can, if you, for example, if I'm teaching biology or, or if I'm teaching, we were talking about you know, some people that they teach uh, rocks. You know, you can utilize exactly the same scenery and everything, and, and you can uh, utilize these resources to do, for example, a, a, a class with the geology, or a, you know, you can hide some rocks somewhere, and they can actually go and pick up the rocks, and they can uh, explore, you know, different environments. We we have used this resource uh, in the um, Central Park, you know, to go with kids. You know, they start like picking up the garbage from a different type of garbage and then they classify based on the color code that we have. Um, so, so basically what we're trying to do here is to recreate and give what, what we call an experimental, um, an experiential uh, learning uh, type of practice, right? Uh, let me start right there. Uh, uh, let me let me go back over here. I have another one. And this one uh, is something similar. 
right? Uh, and I just want to show how the students actually you know, interact. I put a little bit of music to make it like a more entertaining. Those are my students. This is me right there, and those are part of my students that are very joining the, the session, right? So, So this is the classroom that I showed you the, the, the floor, right? The students are already sitting there, right? The, the, the students are, are, are sitting there uh, in, in the classroom. They can ask questions, right? Uh, this, this, um, so this particular software allows people to uh, to talk, right? This is this uh, this corner right here. You can see. So this is a chat uh, um, tool. So they can actually talk in the class. They can ask questions. They can actually um, uh, participate in the class, right? So what we have done is we have combined this uh, the, the game with actually with like a worksheet, right? And in a worksheet, the students uh, they can actually combine the two skills, right? It's not only about gaming. But it's also about you know uh, making sure that we also reinforce the reading, the writing, right? The working a piece of paper and, and making sure that they do the work, so they can actually have the, the possibility to do the same work in a digital way, uh, way right? In, in, a, in a format where you can have like a PDF file uh, that you can actually submit uh, as a homework. So part of those these efforts that we've been doing. Uh, here is it's just to make sure that the students actually participate. It's not only sitting in front of the computer, you know, and, and taking, taking, taking um, information, but without being able to participate, right? So we've been working also uh, already with some groups in, in Africa. We have put some, um, you know, some, uh, I think at, at the beginning I have some, uh, some of the, uh, uh, Work that we've been doing with them over there. Yeah, they, they, you know, they have all these possibilities to, to, you know, be really active. They can, you know, explore the, the inside of the water. This is a, a development that we did for Africa. Uh, you know, there is so many things that that you can do. Uh, and the same uh, game you can apply for, for many different uh, applications. So essentially, I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, one second. One second, please. Yeah. And so uh, currently what we are doing is uh, we are working in different projects, particularly in chemistry. We are working in the balancing equations. Uh, we are working in nomenclature. This is, is like the scenery that we've been discussing and how to put this thing together, right? And we are working also in the clinical uh, formula, uh, writing formulas, uh, decimal system and whatnot. That's part of the current project that we are working on, uh, right? Uh, so. So that way we're gonna have a more and more uh, resources to share with anybody, right? Like I said before, so if I'm teaching bi bi biology, for example, I can use that resource, uh, you know, and I can use that um, environment to teach some principles in biology. I don't, I'm not, uh, I don't know anything about biology, but I guess you can, can do it or geology or any, any kind of um, uh, uh, discipline that you guys have, uh, teaching is, is very possible to fit it in this in this format. Um, uh, this is this is uh, basically the, the summary of everything that I have here to show you. Um, I just want to thank you uh, for uh, the invitation once again. This is me here, uh, and this is my partner uh, in, in this project, uh, uh, Professor Jairo Ojuela. Um, he's been you know very instrumental, like I said, in, in doing a uh, you know, a lot of work and none of us, we are not a, a computer guys or engineers or anything like that. Everything being just based, based on you know, a couple of computers like this and you know, trying to 
to create this experience for our students. So basically, that's uh, that's what we are doing uh, here. Yeah. The, if you guys have questions, I'll be happy to to answer them. <laughs> 